Protests very quickly spilled over into riots here in Tottenham in 2011. That Saturday night, large parts of this area were up in flames. Tottenham became a battleground. Tonight, people are only just starting to get wind of the news of the verdict. As we know, Mark Duggan's family outside court today said the phrase, no justice, no peace. Usma's husband refused to accept anything was wrong with his son. For this interview, she wanted to keep her face hidden. In your mind, did you get a sense that certain cultural pressures were being prioritised over the health and well-being of your son? Very much so, very much. I mean, um, certain guests weren't allowed. I wasn't allowed. Why do you go here? Why do you go there? Um, and it's plain because pe he didn't want people to know. He didn't even want to take him to school. In Pakistan, they lot believe a lot in black magic, and um, he said he'll take him home. He took him back home for four months, um, saying that he would be able to cure him, you know, make him better in everything, in, in every aspect. We've just been in that bedroom there. We found those three beds, and then went into that bedroom there. So that's two rooms. We found another four beds. So Unlicensed houses in multiple occupation are a common problem in Newham. Tenants living in cramped conditions and landlords raking in the rent. If you go find the big room or like that, so we can't manage and we can't afford the like uh, that much uh, room rent actually. So we have to manage that actually. You understand? Huh? We have to do that. With a chronic shortage of social housing and people being priced out of the rental market, the problem of HMOs and so-called sheds with beds is increasing. This window just next to East Ham Station is full of adverts for rooms to rent and no doubt some of the landlords advertising here will be flouting planning regulations and exploiting their tenants. It's likely few people paid attention to a young man preaching Islamic doctrine, but he became well known as the man who killed Fusilier Lee Rigby in an act he described as a military operation. Do you have a memory of him at these Yeah, places? of course, yeah. I mean, he's a, a, a wonderful uh, man, wonderful brother. Very good personality, very good character. You say he had a wonderful character. Something went wrong. Well, what I mean, do you think in, happened? In, in, well, I think that what happened is that the uh, British government, with their foreign policy, have been uh, radicalising a whole generation of Muslims, really. Dr. Hassan eventually de-radicalised, he says, by adopting a variety of viewpoints on religion and politics. Do you think the extremist narrative is ultimately a fiction and that for a lot of young people this is very much about the power of identity? The process of radicalisation is a combination of factors. They waded almost like competitors towards a finish line. No winners though, each with everything to lose. What are your plans for the rest of the day? Uh, struggle back when we can. With some food? With some food. And you're just going to bunker down? Yep. We've got no choice, yep. have we? You've got nowhere to go? No. no. What if they tell you that you have to go? We can't go. Full stop. We have no choice. <laughs> That's our home. Well, this afternoon, a group of school children walked out of the doors of St Paul's Cathedral and they would have been the last members of the public to be inside. The dean described this as an unprecedented move and one done with a heavy heart. One minute, there'd be rapturous cheering. The next, contemplative silence. This is how these school children handled their moment with a figure they've read about in their history books. The London riots, for example, demonstrated an element of that frustration. How do you propose to engage young people in the political system when they feel so disenfranchised? When you are behind on a race, you cannot afford to be discouraged. You must fight. Your will must outweigh the circumstances. Care worker Rosa is relying on volunteer Jo to get to her patient. She might be a bit um, distressed. Does she need medicine? She does need medicine. Marjorie is 100 years old. I've got food coming in every day. And also, um, my son insists out on my dining room table 
I've got tins and things that I can open if needs be. Just in case it gets worse? Yes, yes. How far are you prepared to go? Until I choose to die. Turan was stretched away for a checkup as we were leaving. The protesters say here in London they feel far removed from what's happening to their family and friends in Iraq. They say this is their last resort to put pressure on the international community. Well, what better place to premiere a film that was largely shot in the capital. And of course, London has been the colourful backdrop for so many of the films that Richard Curtis has written, produced and directed. And I'm delighted to say that Richard Curtis is with me now, along with one of the stars of his new film, Bill Nighy. Thanks for joining us. Um, so, Richard, first question, something that everyone's probably been asking you. Is this really your last film? Are you really hanging up the clapperboard? I hope so. I think Bill's looking old now. I think that's as far as we can push him. It's Lena Dunham's creation. She's actress, producer, director, and now author. New York City born and bred, with an interesting take on our capital city. When I think of New York, I think of steam coming out of the drains. I think of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Amazing. Seinfeld, Woody Allen, pizza, amazing buildings. What do you associate with London? That's an amazing list of New York associations, especially Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I would say I associate with London, Charles Dickens, Crumpets, <laughs> Ab Fab, um, Top Shop, uh, Scones, so all kinds of different carbohydrates, um, a more liberal relationship to having natural looking teeth, <laughs> and um, and general sort of, you know, 1800s rats in the street, women picking up their petticoats.